Hello again, everybody, and, and welcome to another exciting episode of uh, Comprehensive D&D 5e Guides. Uh, it's been a while si since I've been able to do one of these. Um, if, uh, if, if, if you've been keeping up with my channel, um, uh, I've, I've, I've had some, some, some health issues uh, that have been preventing me from from do, doing a lot of things and um i'm also uh working on the capstone of my my uh bachelor's degree so combination of of really bad health stuff and uh capstone meant i, I didn't have a whole lot of time uh to to do do stuff like this but uh, it's it's been a while, and this is s something that's that's been requested. So uh, yeah, and I'm I'm I excited to do it. So I'm gonna see what I can get through. I'm I'm not sure if I'm gonna ch chop this up into two videos or or just do it as one, just because the the class itself uh, is kind of. Uh, I mean, it was designed to be relatively self-explanatory as far as how it worked, um, and and that's what uh, the, these these guides are is is me kind of explaining how it was designed to work, so that you can play it uh, as as well as possible. Because once you understand kind of the the why behind the what, you can you know r really start playing around with the character and, and getting them to, to, to work the way that you want. But if, but if you don't understand like the design philosophy or if you don't understand how it's designed to work and then you try and get it to you know do something that it's not designed to do, um, it's just it's not going to be a fun character to play. So anyway, um, the, 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 the character that I'm uh, going to be uh, or the, the class I'm going to be talking about, uh, is uh, a, a custom class that I designed over or uh, two years ago now, uh, actually uh, two two and a half years ago now, um, and I, I I published it on the DMs Guild. There'll be a link in uh, the description if you want to go and download it. Uh, but it's called the Dragon Knight, um, and I I want to start off with uh, basically why I I made the class. Um, I am a, a huge believer in the idea that that fifth edition is really well designed, and using a combination of feats and the classes and and subclasses that are already in the game, you can create such a a massive uh, massive amount of different characters. Uh, and so, um, generally, I'm not a, a fan of people creating uh, classes and, and things like that that basically do the same things that other classes already do, just better or um, uh, or will combine basically two different classes into one so that the person doesn't have to multi-class. I'm, I'm not a big fan of that because you can already d do those things in the game. There's no reason to create a new class or subclass or anything just because you don't like the rules written the way that they are. Uh, I, I, again, 5th edition is really well designed. There's a lot of balance built into it. And when you start doing things like they had, um, <clears throat> they had a class, I, I don't know, uh, if it's uh, a bestseller, uh, I, I I can't remember. I could look it up. Um, I'll do that while I'm talking. Uh, but anyway, they had this class called the Pugilist, and uh, and I was not a a, a a fan of it simply because it was it was a barbarian and a fighter, is all it was. And yeah, it is a Yeah, it is uh, 
Uh, it's 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 a platinum bestseller, just just like my um, my uh, my Dragon Knight uh, is a platinum bestseller, and so is this Pugilist. And I, I wasn't a, a big fan of it um, when I first looked at it. I've I've not looked at the class since, um, and I'm assuming there have been quite a few different uh, updates to it. But it was basically a b barbarian monk. That's that's all it was was a barbarian monk. And if you looked through. Uh, again, the original version of the class. If you look through it, they had rage, they had martial arts, they had key. Like they could do everything a monk could do, or almost everything a monk could do, and almost everything a barbarian could do. Um, and to me, that's it's not that's not a, a a good design. You can already create that character with the things that you have. Um, uh, so so anyway. Uh, back to the Dragon Knight. The the reason I made this is I uh, I'm a big fan of knights in general. Like the idea of a person that um, makes a pledge to a, a a lord or a king or to some being um, to fight for them or to carry on their ideals or things like that. Um, and uh, dedicates their life to uh, the ideals or, or the, um, uh, the wants or needs of someone else, you know, to basically be their voice. Um, I really like that idea. Um, and that already exists in D&D. They have uh, backgrounds you can take that kind of... Uh, uh, let you uh, role play that aspect and fr from a mechanical aspect if you are a warlock uh, you actually are pledged to your your patron and and they you know you you kind of have to do what they want but it's it's not so much a I, I pledge myself to you it's more of a, a tit for tat kind of relationship it's like I want this and you want this so we can work to, to, to together um, so they, they had things like that in D&D, &D, but they didn't have a way for you to really kind of serve a dragon. Um, and when you look at things like, uh, you know, the Dragonlance campaign setting, or even just uh, the, the kind of the, the Forgotten Realms, uh, dragons are a, a massive, massive part of that world and uh they have uh you know areas that they they rule over uh, and things like that and uh there are stories where uh in in forgotten realms and in Dragonlance and and uh, a lot of other um uh D, D worlds uh where you know entire groups of people basically uh you know serve and and sometimes worship a, a dragon because he's their ruler and everything and you have good dragons and evil dragons and neutral dragons and things like that but there was never uh there there wasn't really a way to create a character that was a servant of a dragon um other than just saying oh yeah i'm you know i i, I work for the the big the giant gold thing over there that can breathe fire and melt us all that's my boss um and uh, i'm i'm also a, a big fan of final fantasy uh, in general, uh, and uh, a, a game on the PS1 called The Legend of Dragoon, um, and uh, Breath of Fire, the Bre Breath of Fire series. All of those kind of um, influence the design of this, where uh, instead of... Because to, to be blunt, dragons don't really need servants. They're super powerful, uh, and having just uh, a, a single adventurer working for them, basically... Uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense because they're just not powerful enough. So that's kind of where the, the Dragon Knight came from, was this idea of, well, wouldn't it be cool? Uh, um, a Legend of Mana also had uh, two characters that were Dragon Knights, and, and so wouldn't it be cool if uh, a dragon were to gift some of its... Um, immense power because ancient dragons are really really powerful and a lot of times they not only have their their physical attributes but their 
incredibly intelligent and have magic and all this. Um, so wouldn't it be cool if the dragon could gift just a, a small portion of their power on an adventurer, and then the adventurer would be that, that dragon knight archetype, you know, where it's, you know, I serve this master, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, and their gift to me for, for serving them is this increased power. And so that's kind of where it came from. And then I had to turn it into, okay, well, mechanically, what does that turn into? How does, how does this, uh, thing, uh, work? Uh, and, uh, yeah. So, um, like I, uh, said before in, in, in fifth edition, uh, uh, and this is actually where I, I first learned this rule um, from one of my playtesters. Um, what was um, in fifth edition? You really want to define what makes your class unique within the first two levels. And I flirt with that a little bit because the choice um, of a dracon dr dr draconic calling at third level um, changes. Uh, how the uh, character is played and, and really, really defines the character. Um, but for the most part, most of the building blocks of the class are built into the, the first two levels, just like all of the core classes. And I also made sure that despite the fact that, you know, they're getting this power from a dragon, which is an uber powerful uh, creature in, in, in D&D, &D, um, that they were never going to be overpowered to where uh, if a Dragon Knight and like a fighter were both in the same round, you know, the Dragon Knight wouldn't be instantly, you know, uh, out, out damaging uh, the fighter, making the fighter feel kind of useless for the, the thing that, that they do best, which is fighting. Um, so that's kind of where uh, I came from. Uh, let's, let's get into the, uh, uh, the Dragon Knight itself. Um, so the first things first, uh, I, I normally don't go over the, uh, like, creation section of the classes because um, uh, the creation section is, is generally the same thing with every single class. It'll tell you your hit points and your hit dice. Uh, it'll tell you your proficiencies. And uh, it'll tell you your saving throws and skills. Uh, for every other class, that's that's a hundred percent right. However, with the Dragon Knight, um, it it is designed a little bit for you to kind of pick what you want. Uh, kind of uh, create the class at level one with an idea in mind of what Draconic Calling you're eventually going to take, um, and that's built into the the equipment section of the um, uh, kind of starting section of the class. Um, the, the defining features, like if we, if we talk about the rogue, remember the, the defining features are their, their expertise, they're, they're really good at certain things, uh, their cunning action, which is what they get at second level, uh, which lets them use their bonus action to do crazy things, uh, and their sneak attack. Um, everything that a rogue does in their call, uh, in their, um, uh, in their subclasses, in all the other features will relate back to one of those three things. You know, either it's going to be something that, that makes them even more good at doing certain things, uh, or it will, you know, give them a, more chances to use their sneak attack or different ways to use their sneak attack, or it will give them more options to use their cunning action. Well, the Dragon Knight um, is defined by uh, kind of th three basic properties as well. And I'll get to the other two in uh, when, when we get to them. Uh, but the first property, uh, and it's actually uh, in part of the, uh, uh, the description of the class at the beginning of the class, I have these three sections that just kind of uh, give a, a lore explanation of the class. Um, and the third section is called a, a weapon forged by power, or I think it's the, yeah. Uh, and what it is, is uh, one of the defining features of the Dragon Knight class 
is what's called their dragon weapon. Um, at level three, when you choose your calling, you will get the ability to change mundane weapons into a brand new weapon type called a dragon weapon. Only a dragon knight is proficient in using, and they're only proficient in using the specific dragon weapon for their calling. Uh, and these weapons don't technically act like uh, any other weapon in the game. Um, so uh, because of that, and because you, you don't get that choice until third level, the equipment section actually has uh, an impact on how you play the character from the beginning. Uh, without getting into to too much detail, because I'm going to get into that later, uh, the equipment, uh, you have, uh, your, uh, you have four choices as, as far as, um, equipment that you get to choose. And the f first choice you make is r really going to define the class. Um, so the first choice you make is, is your weapon. And again, the dragon weapon is a defining feature of the class. Um, you'll see when I, I talk about the callings and everything, um, the uh, improvements that you get in your callings uh, are going to benefit your specific dragon weapon. Um, so uh, the choice you get is um, a one-handed martial melee weapon and a shield. So your, your standard sword and board is uh, choice number one. Uh, choice number two is uh, a pike. Um, or choice number three is a is two one-handed martial melee weapons, and if you choose the pike, you can treat it as if it has the finesse property. The reason I did that is if you choose the pike, uh, generally that means you're going to be. Uh, uh, going down the, the path of the Dragoon, which is the uh, spear-wielding uh, dragon uh, uh, calling. Um, and it's, you know, based on, you know, Final Fantasy Dragoons and a little bit of Legend of Dragoon in there. And it is a, a super high mobility uh, class. It, it has a lot of verticality to it where it can run up walls and, and jump up in the air and, and things like that. And it's designed to be this hyper-mobile uh, somewhat ranged class uh, and because of that uh, it's designed to to work best with dexterity um, so having you have to spend your first two levels using uh, uh, weapons that that don't actually fit what your character is going to be later on didn't make sense to me um, so uh, I added in that thing of, well, yeah, if you, if you have the pike, then uh, you can treat it as a finesse weapon because that's what it's going to be when you use it. Um, and I chose the pike specifically over the spear uh, simply because um, I, I think it was uh, uh, damage dice and, and things to, to make it uh, balanced. Uh, again, it's been two years since I wrote the class, so... Uh, you'll have to forgive me if I've for, forgotten some of it. Um, so yeah, that's that's why just even this initial equipment part um, is a defining part of the class. You're kind of choosing what kind of Dragon Knight you're going to be right from the get-go choosing your starting equipment. Now, does that mean if you choose a Pike and you get to level 3 and you're like, I'm not really into the Dragoon, I, I definitely want to be... be uh, a defender or a war blade that you can't? No, not at all. Uh, it just means that the first couple of levels you are playing your character a certain way, and once you choose your calling, it's uh, 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 you're you're going to start playing your class a little bit differently. Uh, is all. So, um, so that's that. Uh, the other ones, the the one-handed martial melee and a shield. You know, again, that's the sword and board. That's designed uh, to go into the defender which is the kind of very much tanky, defense-oriented, party-helping class. Uh, and then two one-handed martial melee weapons was really designed to turn, uh, uh, eventually turn into the um, uh, 
uh, the war blade, uh, which is uh, the the war blade is uh, the dragon knight equivalent of dual wielding. Um, so um, and we'll we'll go into that when I when I talk about the the w w war blade. Um, so the next thing you get uh, is you get to choose some ranged weapons because you always do, uh, and you can get two hand axes or two javelins. And again, if you choose the javelins, you can treat them as if they have the finesse property. As I mentioned before, uh, the um, Dragoon uh, is a, a partially ranged-based class. They throw their dragon weapon uh, as, as part of their attack. So javelins actually make a lot of sense to give them for a ranged weapon. But again, when comparing what the other classes could do with, with their main weapons, if I just let them use a javelin, they'd be a little bit underpowered for the first two levels. So that's why, you know, they all, they get a pike plus a javelin. Um, and uh, both of them can be treated as if they have the finesse option. So you're a dex-based dragoon. Um, the third thing is your, your armor, chainmail or leather. Um, again, generally, if you're not going to be the dragoon, you're going to use the chainmail because you've you're going to be a strength-based character, so you're probably going to be using heavy armor. Um, whereas with dexterity-based uh, characters, you're, you're going to do a lot better with leather armor or eventually studded leather armor, things like that. Um, and the final thing is Dungeoneer or Explorer's Kit, because you have, you have to have a kit. Um, so the first uh, thing you do right at level one is... Uh, and it, it mentions here, you have been chosen by a dragon to be their champion, enacting their will whenever and wherever they see fit to send you. And that first sentence is, is, is really designed to define the, uh, the class. You are not choosing a dragon. A dragon has chosen you. Um... And that really sets up the dynamic between the Dragon Knight and their master uh, and, and really uh, kind of defines what this is. You are indebted to this creature because they've chosen you for a reason. And, and they uh, talk about um, in uh, the uh, portion of the introduction called Creating a Dragon Knight, they, they talk about, you know, why are you a Dragon Knight? What drove you to the point where you would accept this choice? Because, I mean... Just because you're chosen doesn't mean they can technically compel you, and, and that's written into the class as well. They don't control your actions or anything like that. They've chosen you, and you've agreed to it. Um, and so you, you need to have a reason why you agreed to it. Um, and it needs to be uh, something that makes sense for both the dragon and uh, the player, uh, uh, the, 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 the character. Um, so... Um, uh, at uh, first level, um, you actually get to pick what kind of dragon it was that chose you. Uh, from a again, from a mechanic standpoint, uh, this is a choice the player makes. Uh, it's not a choice that is given to them. Um, but DMs can just go, "No, I'm actually going to make the decision for you because you've been chosen," uh, as opposed to you just kind of shopping around and going, "Ooh, I like that dragon." Um, but mechanics-wise, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you choose an adult or ancient chromatic, metallic, or gem dragon, and this is your dragon master. This is the person. Uh, this is the being that has given you part of your power, and you've agreed to be their champion. You've agreed to be their voice when they're not there, and you're you agreed to uh, enact their will and do what is ever best for them. You've kind of given your life over to this dragon. Um, and there's a lot of different reasons they talk about in there for doing that from a lore perspective. It could be that you greatly admire the dragon itself and, you know, you agree with their ideals. And so they chose you because of that and, and you accepted it because you agree with them. It could be that the dragon is threatening to raise your town unless, you know, the strongest fighter from the town comes out and becomes their, uh, uh, their dragon knight. Uh, and then there's their uh, kind of an adversarial thing where, hey, listen, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, gi I'm giving you this power, 
Uh, but if you don't do what I want, I'm going to destroy your your village or your your you know your family or something like that, uh, or or a lot of other things. Again, there's there's a lot of reasons why a a, a character might want to do this, um, and that should be in your head because it'll change how you how you play the character. If you're a reluctant Dragon Knight, where you are kind of forced into service because if you don't, they will do something you don't want. You are you know kind of selflessly giving up your own will to protect other people, uh, that's going to change how you play the, the, the class. And it, and it may even end up with you trying to fight your Dragon Master a little bit. Um, one of the things uh, that I've, I've touched on in, in, in the comments on the, the DMs Guild, and I've, I mentioned this to players, once you have been you know, blessed by the dragon, you know, once they've given you that, that gift and turned you into a Dragon Knight, um, it's not like a warlock's pact where you are completely reliant like a, a warlock can't cast spells without their pact master um the uh, what happens with a warlock is they don't cast the spells their uh wh whatever they made the pact with actually does the spell casting uh the warlock is just a conduit the dragon knights isn't they they put like a little spark of their being inside you and as you become more powerful that spark grows and that's why you gain m more more powers and, and things like that and become more powerful um so uh yeah um theoretically if if you were to get powerful enough you could kill your dragon master and there's things built into the class that give your dragon master a way to prevent that from happening um to a point. Uh, so if you're that reluctant dragon uh, knight, uh, you may eventually find a group of adventurers and, and may eventually convince them to you know, attack and, and kill your dragon master to save your town. It doesn't mean you stop being a dragon knight. You, you are permanently a dragon knight. As long as you level up in the class, that little bit of power continues to grow. So you don't technically need a dragon master after that initial blessing. However, um, adults and ancient dragons are not something that even uh, like a level 10 party would be able to take down on their own. Like if it's an ancient dragon, you ancient dragons are something that like high tier 3, tier 4 characters fight and they fight one of them. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's not something like, oh, I get my dragon power, then stab, and I'm all good. No, you're going to have to serve this dragon for a f fair amount of time before you could even think about betraying them. And they have things in place, because uh, it wouldn't make sense for a dragon t t to, to give out a power like that if it could be used against them. So, anyway, going back to mechanics, you choose uh, a chromatic, metallic, or gem dragon. There is a table in there. Um, and it officially has uh, black, blue, brass, bronze, copper, crystal, emerald, gold, green, red, sapphire, silver, topaz, and white. Um, basic rule of thumb, chromatic dragons, which are colors, black, blue, uh, green, red, white, um, those are evil dragons. Um, metallic dragons, uh, which are, are, are dragons named after metals, brass, bronze, copper, uh, gold, silver, those are um, good dragons. Um, and they actually have specific alignments. If you have the monster manual, you can look like uh, gold dragons are lawful good. Um, I think copper dragons are chaotic good. Uh, but all the metallic dragons are good. All the uh, chromatic dragons are evil of one alignment or another. And then all the gem dragons, uh, te technically gem dragons don't appear in 5th edition officially, but they've existed in previous editions and they're neutral dragons. Um, so that's um, crystal, emerald, uh, sapphire, uh, and topaz. Um, and they're named after crystal. Again, they're, they're neutral. You know, they're either lawful neutral um, true neutral uh, or chaotic neutral. Um, I don't think there's any uh, uh, um, 
uh, crystal dragons that are, uh, you know, neutral good or neutral evil. Uh, but I'd have to look into that. Anyway, so you choose the dragon. Um, it's going to have a damage type associated with it. Like black dragons are associated with acid. That's what their breath attack is. Uh, and they actually have resistance or immunity to uh, acid-based attacks. Blue dragons are lightning. Bronze dragons are also lightning. Uh, emerald dragons are force. Uh, sapphire dragons are thunder, uh, which is sound. Um, so you pick your dragon master, and that's uh, going to influence uh, a couple different things. Uh, the first thing uh, it does is... Uh, you gain resistance to the damage type associated with your Dragon Master according to the table. So, you know, if you are the Dragon Knight of a Black Dragon, you have, from level one, you have resistance to acid damage. Um, uh, because it's only a specific damage type, um, uh, s some of the comments I got were, you know, does that... Uh, you know, unbalance uh, the class or anything like that. Not really. You can get resistances at level one. Like if you're a tiefling, you have resistance to fire damage uh, and other things like that. So having resistance to, to one damage type, it's not that big a deal, especially since at low levels, you're generally not doing with dealing with a lot of elemental damage and none of the damage types are, are physical. Um, so uh, yeah, it's not that big a deal. The other thing and this is something that, that really is kind of unique, uh, is as a bonus action, you can infuse your weapon with the power granted by your, your, your Dragon Master, changing its damage type to the damage associated with your Dragon Master. This lasts until you take a short or long rest or cancel it as a bonus action. So what that means is if you're using, uh, let's say you're using uh, a pair of scimitars. You know, you took the two martial weapons using a pair of scimitars. Um, you can infuse uh, your uh, scimitars uh, one at a time since it's two weapons, but it lasts there until you cancel it or you sleep. Uh, and you can do it right when you wake up. So um, so that instead of doing slashing damage, we'll use the, the Black Dragon example, they do acid damage. Um, and this uh, uh, is a really uh, interesting thing because at low levels... Um, you have uh, some creatures that are very, very difficult for low-powered parties because they will have a resistance to, like, bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing damage by non-magical weapons, and nobody has magic weapons that low. Um, so, you know, giving you this ability to just change your damage type is really useful because you can only change it to one damage type, it's not really game breaking, but again, it is something that that defines the class is this ability of, OK, I have a little more flexibility in, in my melee attacks than uh, like a fighter or uh, a rogue or something like that, because I can make my melee attacks a different damage type. Uh, so, again, w one of the defining features of the class, I, I said there's three of them, is your weapon is a huge part of, of your identity. Um, and that is right here at level one. That's kind of uh, defined, you know. Uh, you can change the damage type of your weapon uh, because it is a defining aspect of, of who you are and will become an even more defining aspect as you gain levels in this class. Um, second thing, this uh, is another first level thing, and it is this is entirely a, a role playing aspect to it. Uh, and this is that kind of catch that I, I mentioned uh, in uh, there, where uh, dragons uh, the the dragon's not going to give you this power without a catch. Uh, basically, um, your uh, Dragon Master has the ability to contact you as as long as you're on the same plane of existence. They can contact you telepathically whenever. Um, because uh, uh, I got some some playtest feedback that there were uh, people that were abusing this by you know any time they would go up against enemies, they'd just contact their Dragon Master and get all this information about their enemies because dragons are super intelligent. Um, 
I, I specifically made it that the Dragon Master has to initiate the conversation. Um, but once it's initiated, uh, they can communicate with you. And uh, they can even go as, as far um, as uh, uh, being able to, to see through your eyes and, and hear through your ears uh, if you will uh, uh, allow them to do that. And if you decide to try and fight them for any reason, um, they, they can actually force you to kind of give over control of your senses to them so they can see what's happening. So again, that's, that's a control aspect. If they think that you're plotting against them, they can just dial into your head and see and hear everything that you're doing. You'll be aware that it's happening, um, but uh, uh, a lot of times their DC is going to be so high that you're not going to, to be able to stop them. Um, another thing is if they uh, contact you and you don't answer back and try to ignore them, they can inflict levels of exhaustion, one level of exhaustion per minute that you're ignoring them. Um, exhaustion is a really big deal. In 5th edition, it's one of the most dangerous status afflictions you can get because I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's either five or six levels of exhaustion, your character is dead. It's not making saving throws. It's, it's not, you know, unconscious. You are dead. And even one level of exhaustion, you have disadvantage on everything but, uh, uh, or on all ability checks. Once you get to two levels of exhaustion, uh, all your attack rolls, uh, and I, I think saving throws too, I'd have to look at it again, are at disadvantage. That's a major deal. Um, and it just gets progressively worse. Um, but even just two levels of exhaustion, two minutes of going, no, you know, five more minutes, mom, um, is uh, dangerous. And like I said, within five to six minutes, your dragon master can just outright kill you. Um, so that's that, that bit of control. Now, when you turn that into uh, combat, combat rounds last for six seconds. So if you were actually in combat with your dragon master, they could attempt to kill you off by just giving you levels of exhaustion. One level of exhaustion, again, takes a minute for them to give you. That's ten rounds. So when you cut it down into combat, it doesn't mean that you're completely screwed <clears throat> excuse me much better um, doesn't mean you're completely screwed you're just going to have to be much more powerful to fight your dragon master if you ever get to that point um, so that's what uh, uh, that is um, the other thing that's, that's interesting about it is if someone attempts to read your mind while you're in contact with your Dragon Master, they basically get hit with uh, a Frightful Presence attack, which is uh, an attack that all dragons ha have. Excuse me. <clears throat> it's, it's an attack that um, all dragons uh, have. <clears throat> And it creates, uh, it, it basically um, scares people. Uh, but it's a really, really high uh, wisdom save, I believe it is. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, it's, uh, there, there's kind of a, a benefit to you as well. If your Dragon Master is talking to you, if you're, you're being tortured and your Dragon Master contacts you and they try and use, like, detect thoughts or something, you could massively screw up the person trying to um, uh, trying to basically steal information from you. Um, so there are pluses and minuses to this level of control. Um, so uh, yeah, that's what that is. And that's all level one. So really defining as your weapon is a defining aspect. You are v very much tied to your weapon um, as far as how the class goes. Um, and uh, the, the rest of the defining features we're, 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 we're going to get to now. Um, second level, you get the other uh, kind of really uh, defining feature, or, or the, the, the next two defining features, basically, which are the um, Draconic 
power points and um, your dragon die. Um, so those are the other two defining features of this class. Draconic power points are, are kind of like key points, but significantly less uh, numerous. Um, at, at max level, you only get six of them. Um, but you will use them to do all of the really cool Dragon Knight stuff that uh, you're eventually able to do. They're called Dragon Attacks. Um, and they can be everything from uh, the Dragon Attack you get here, which I'll, I'll, I'll explain in just a second, um, <clears throat> to um, you know things like you know jumping into the air and impaling someone with your spear, or throwing your double blade uh, in kind of like a boomerang type thing and hitting a bunch of enemies, or you know just rushing through an entire group of enemies with your paired shields, knocking them over or, or dragging them across the battlefield with you. Um, they're really, really cool things. They're generally pretty powerful. And uh, they're designed that if you crit with them, you do a lot of damage. The <clears throat> Dragon Knight itself uh, is really good with crits. Um, uh, a lot of the things that it does has multiple die uh, or multiple dice that you roll uh, and with crits for every die that you roll you get to add a, a second of that die uh, so um, uh, Dragon Knights are, are specifically kind of built around the idea that critting is really really good and if you can crit on, on dragon attacks and things like that uh, that is where you're going to be most powerful. And anything else that helps you with getting crits, like the, the lucky feat, which allows you to re-roll things, uh, any stuff like that is going to be useful to you. Um, so uh, with Draconic Power, um, you start off uh, at second level with... I have to go back up. Yeah, you start off with two Draconic Power Points at second level. Uh, and at second level, you can only do uh, uh, one thing uh, with it. Um, you uh, uh, every so often, uh, your your dragon attacks will have a save, uh, and the DC is base uh, eight plus your proficiency bonus plus your wisdom modifier. So, uh, dragon knights need to have a decent wisdom modifier uh, because that will be how your dragon attacks uh, work and, and how effective they are. Uh, plus, they will need either strength or dexterity for your actual uh, attacks themselves. Um, so um, the dragon attack that you get right at second level, which again is the other kind of defining aspect of this, these dragon uh, draconic power points that can be used for dragon attacks, is what's called dragon transformation. Um, when taking the attack action... Um, so you have to make the attack action. You don't actually have to make the attack first. You just have to take the action as, and as part of that action, uh, you can unleash your draconic power to transform into a dragon hybrid in addition to making your attacks. Um, so what this is, is this is quite literally, if, if you've ever played the Legend of Dragoon, they transform into their Dragoon forms and they, you know, get cool armor and, you know, just look really badass and their weapons change. Heavily influenced us. So what it is, is uh, you sprout wings from your back, giving you a fly speed equal to your walk speed. Uh, and there's a little bit of information about what happens if your transformation ends while you're in the air. Because um, then you don't have a fly speed anymore. Um, so, yeah, you get to fly, which is incredibly useful, especially for a second level character. Um, I will talk about how that's not massively overpowered in a second here. Um, but that's the first thing that happens, is you get dragon wings. Uh, and that's really badass. Um, each non-dragon attack weapon attack you hit with, while transformed, does additional damage. What that means is, as long as you're not using a dragon attack, any time you're transformed and you hit, you're going to just do extra damage. Um, the damage type is the same as uh, the resistance you gained as part of the Dragon Pact class feature. So again, with that Black Dragon, you're going to actually do extra acid damage every time you hit while you're transformed. How much damage is it? 
Well, that's the third defining aspect of the Dragon Knight. You have this thing called a Dragon Die. It's kind of similar to the martial arts die from the Monk, where it gets more powerful, uh, it gets larger as you get more powerful. Um, and it starts as a D4, uh, and it doesn't get quite as big as the, uh, the Monk. I believe it maxes out at a D10, um, which might actually be exactly what it is, but... Anyway, so um, so that means basically while, while you're, uh, uh, again, for example, with the uh, black uh, dual scimitar wielding character, when you're transformed, ev every hit from a scimitar is going to do 1d6 damage from the scimitar, plus your dexterity modifier because it's a finesse weapon or your strength modifier, you can choose to do either, plus 1d4 acid damage. Um, so the, the first damage uh, might be acid damage if you've already transformed the damage type, or it could just be slashing damage, uh, but the additional dragon die damage is acid, and it's a d4. So that becomes pretty darn useful. Um, so uh, the transformation gives you extra mobility, uh, gives you a little bit of extra damage, which when you get to higher levels, a D4 doesn't really mean a whole lot, which is why that dragon die gets bigger and bigger. Uh, it meant that I, I didn't have to uh, rebalance uh, like uh, they do with cantrips and things like that uh, in 5th edition, where when you hit 5th level, it does this much more damage when you hit... With the Dragon Die just getting bigger as you level up, uh, I don't have to worry about scaling anything. It will auto-scale everything that the class does, which also means the, uh, the, the Dragon Attacks that you get at, like, third level are still really useful at 17th level, whereas a lot of times, uh, like a wizard, by the time they've hit 16th, 17th level, they're barely ever using cantrips. Um, they're mostly using their spells. Um, so this was specifically done, you know, so that uh, you're never feeling like the stuff that you earned uh, when you were a low-level character isn't useful. You just get more and more tools in your toolbox that you can use. Um, so that's that. Uh, you gain resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage while transformed. That's literally, that's just... Uh, uh, very similar to the um, uh, Barbarian Rage feature. You know, that's I, it's the same basic thing. And Barbarians get Rage uh, at first or second level. So again, it's not something that's unbalancing the game at all. You're basically getting a, a similar feature to what a Barbarian gets uh, with a few changes to make sure that you're not going to be more powerful than a Barbarian. Um, any other dragon attacks made while transformed, score a critical hit on a roll of 18 through 20. So you have an expanded crit range only while you're transformed uh, for your dragon attacks. Uh, I'll, I'll explain the dragon attacks a little later, uh, but the dragon attacks require you to spend draconic power points. They're listed as dragon attacks in the document, uh, and they're the really cool things you get to do. So if you transform by using one of your uh, draconic uh, power points um, and then make an attack while you're transformed, you have a significantly better chance of critting, which again fits into the idea of this class is, is, is meant to be a, a crit, uh, you know, a crit killer. When this class crits, it, it, it does major, major damage. Um, uh, when it's not critting, when you're not transformed, um, you're a little bit uh, you're a little bit less powerful because you don't get a lot of the other things that other classes uh, do get because everything is based on uh, your weapon, your dragon transformation, uh, and uh, uh, your 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 dragon pack stuff. So, um, yeah, that's where the uh, that's where the choice in this class. Uh, comes in is because you have such a limited pool of draconic power points 
Um, you do have to make the decision, do I want to spend them now and just do a ton of damage right now and risk the chance that we're going to get into uh, another fight and I'm going to be kind of significantly less useful? Or uh, do I hold on to some of them so that I always have the ability to, to do something um, in later fights? You, you do get your Draconic Power Points back after a short rest, but again, uh, you only have two... Uh, at level two, when you first get them, uh, you get three at level five, uh, and then you, you don't get four until uh, level nine. Uh, so, yeah, it is, it's a very limited resource. I, I did that on purpose because, again, when you look at all the stuff that you can do while transformed, if the Dragon Knight could be constantly transformed, they would outclass every other character. Um, so I had to put some very specific limits on what they could and couldn't do. Um, uh, the, the transformation, uh, again, costs one Draconic Power Point, uh, and it lasts for 30 seconds. So compared to a Barbarian, uh, whose rage lasts for a minute, um, yours is only going to last for 30 seconds. Um, and the other thing uh, I put in there is due to the demanding nature of this transformation, you must wait 10 minutes after the transformation ends before you can activate this ability again. Again, an another kind of limiting aspect to it is, uh, and I wanted, I wanted players to have a real choice to make um, regarding uh, the dragon transformation. Again, it's a really useful thing. It's a really cool thing from uh, a... Uh, uh, from like a lore perspective, you know, you get this cool looking armor. Like, you can, you can call it whatever you want, and you can describe it however you want. But I always kind of envision it as, you know, you get this really cool armor. You get these wings that split out. Your weapon starts radiating a certain kind of energy. You look badass, uh, and you can do all these cool things. Uh, so to kind of limit how. Uh, how much of a benefit you get from things like that, uh, uh, that's, uh, that's where the, it's, it's only for 30 seconds, and uh, uh, you have to wait 10 minutes after it ends to do it again. So if you're in a dungeon, and you get into a fight, but you know that there's another fight coming up, you may decide not to use your dragon transformation, because if the next fight happens, you know, within a couple minutes you're going to be kind of screwed because you can't use your dragon transformation. One of the kind of defining aspects of your class is that dragon transformation, dragon attack. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I wanted there to, 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 to be choice built into it. And like I've said in, in, in other things before, um, good, uh, uh, good game design uh, gives the player choices. Poor game design... Uh, gives the illusion of choice with a clear, uh, a clear right answer. Um, yes, technically you can do all these things, but this is the thing you you should be doing, uh, because this is always going to be the best choice. I never want that in my class. So uh, I, I, again, is the dragon transformation powerful? Absolutely, it's supposed to be. There are limitations, so it is something that you do need to make a conscious choice about. Um, so that's kind of the, the more most complicated aspects of the class are in the first two levels. Um, at level three, you choose your Draconic Calling. Uh, because of how long this video is getting, I will have a separate video for the Draconic Callings, um, kind of like I've done for the other classes. Uh, and then f fourth level, you get your Ability Score Improvement. Uh, you get the same number of Ability Score Improvements as every class other than Fighters, because again, Fighters get extra. Uh, ability score improvements and uh, again those can either be increasing scores or they can be feats um, and depending on what you choose your draconic calling there are some massively useful feats uh, you can get and there are some feats that really don't work well uh, with the dragon knight on purpose um, so yeah the that gives you a whole lot of nuance to, to how to play your your your, your dragon knight uh, Fifth level, you get extra attack. Very simple. Again, because this is a, a you know a weapon based class, uh, you have to get extra attack. That's just how it works. Um, in order to keep 
pace with everything. You're you're not going to get as many attacks as a fighter because that's their thing. They get lots of attacks. Um, but you do get two attacks instead of one. And if you do a wield, that means you get two attacks and then a third for a bonus action. So, um, so yeah, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, seventh level uh, is Draconic Presence. And this was designed to be... Uh, have some combat advantage, but also have role-playing aspects to it. And there are specific parts of this class that don't actually have combat advantage whatsoever. I did not want this to be a purely combat-focused class. Um, even uh, the uh, Dragon Transformation, I didn't want that to be entirely a combat-based thing. That's why there's a fly speed aspect to it. Um, it basically means if there's a situation where you need uh, to get somewhere that you can't, you can burn a dragon transformation outside of combat, and you have 30 seconds of flight. Um, which, for uh, uh, if you use a dash, means uh, 60 feet um, every 6 seconds, or 10 feet a second uh, of... Uh, flight, meaning you can get pretty far before your dragon transformation ends. Um, so I did want aspects of this class to have role playing, uh, and the draconic presence is is a hundred percent that it does have uh, some combat um, aspects, but I I think this has a little bit more of an influence on uh, non combat encounters. Um, so you're. Uh, s s s Starting at, at, at seventh level, your draconic power has started manifesting in physical ways. This may be something like smoke coming out of your nose or your eyes changing to look like your dragon master's eyes. You can use these manifestations to inspire fear in an opponent. As a bonus action, because again, it can be used in combat, you can force a creature within 30 feet of you to make a wisdom saving throw. On a failure, they are frightened for one minute. On the end of each turn, they can repeat the saving throw and success the frightened condition to end. Uh, and then after using uh, the ability, you must complete a short or long rest before using it again. So again, didn't want to give them too much power to every turn. I can use a bonus action to, to scare somebody. Um, because again, that's not a choice. That's, uh, well, I'm always going to use this. Um, but, uh, uh, again, in combat, scaring someone is a useful crowd control ability, um, but it, it has its limits. They can save out of it, um, and uh, fear is, is, is not the most debilitating condition, but it is very useful. However, in a, um, in a uh, role-playing encounter, if, 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 you're, um, if you're trying to intimidate someone, a hundred percent, I would say, if they're afraid of you, your intimidation roles are going to be made at advantage in my book. Uh, I don't believe there's specific rulings in there about that. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, I can come up with a hundred different role-playing ideas of just the ability that you can manifest a draconic aspect to yourself uh, and just scare people crazy. Because, again, you don't have to be a dragonborn to be a dragon knight. You can just be a human walking around and suddenly uh, smoke starts coming out of your nose like you're about to breathe fire. Uh, or you look at someone and your eyes glow and look like a dragon's eyes. Um, or, um, you know, it, it might be something as simple as scales start appearing on you that, that look just like your master's scales. You know, however you want to play this off, that's a big deal. Um, and it will, will, will definitely... Uh, mess with uh, people and, and give you the ability to influence people in a way you can't. Um, so that's the seventh level ability. Uh, ninth, uh, 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 again, uh, the three basics of this class are the weapon itself um, is is very important to the class. Um, the uh, draconic uh, power points are a defining feature of the class. Uh, including that dragon transformation and uh, the dragon die. So everything is going to influence one of those three ideas. Ninth level is improved flight. Um, it basically means uh, when you're using your dragon transformation, instead of just getting uh, a flight speed uh, the same as your um, uh, walk speed, it is double your walk speed. So again, really gives you 
uh, much more mobility. Uh, it gives you the, the ability, even outside of combat, to do a lot more things in that 30 seconds you're transformed for. Um, so very useful. Um, at 11th level, uh, your control over your draconic powers improved to the point where you can focus it into your attacks. Um, I had to word this in a very specific way to uh, keep it from being abused, so it sounds very confusing, and I'm not going to read it. What it basically means is uh, that first feature you had of changing the damage type of your weapon, now if you do that, you add uh, a dragon die to just your normal attacks when you're not transformed. And when you are transformed, you add two dragon dice instead of one to all of your non-dragon attack weapon attacks. So um, it's just uh, it's just additional damage. Uh, it's it's meant to keep pace with the paladin, uh, the cleric. There's a, there's a couple different classes that they just get extra damage. Um, uh, so uh, and they get it right around eleventh level. It, uh, I specifically chose eleventh level so that it wouldn't stack with like you couldn't take you know, nine levels of, of Dragon Knight and then 11 levels of Paladin and get Radiant and your Dragon Die damage and stuff like that. Um, so it's it's 11th level. It's it's meant to be something that um, uh, is not able to be stacked with the Paladin's uh, Divine something uh, ability, but it, it keeps your damage in line with Paladins and Clerics and the like. Uh, war Clerics and things like that. Um... Uh, 13th level, you get what's called extended transformation. It means you can burn two power points instead of just one and stay transformed for a minute instead of 30 seconds. Um, you still have that 10 minute cooldown period. Uh, but again, if you're in a dungeon or something like that, and it looks like you might be in a couple different fights, you know, a minute's going to be a lot more useful. Or you're fighting a really powerful creature, a minute's going to be a lot more useful than 30 seconds. And, uh, if you just do 30 seconds, you have to wait 10 minutes before you can do another 30 seconds. So the extended transformation, when you combine that with the extra uh, damage from uh, Dragon Strike, which is what the, the extra damage is called uh, at 11th level, uh, it, it turns into a very, very useful thing. Um, and again, doesn't really... Uh, break the class too much because again you're you're still limited by the number of draconic power points you have, and uh, the idea of let's say you you do burn two power points uh, for a minute and the fight ends after three rounds, so only 18 seconds have technically gone by. Well, unless you get into another fight within less than a minute, your transformation has ended and you have to wait another 10 minutes before you can do it again. So again. Every time somebody hears about any of these abilities just, just on their own, they'll go, well, that's overpowered. It, it, you know, you know, that's way too overpowered. It's, it, you know, it never will work. No, there are specific limitations built into this. Again, to give you choice instead of this is what you always should do. You should have to make the choice of do I want to spend one, do I want to spend one point or two? It should never be, I'm always going to spend two, because that's always the right answer. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I think this does that very well. Um, at 15th level, uh, basically the resistance that you got, like we, if, if, we, if we go back to our example of the Black Dragon Knight, um, they had resistance to acid damage at level one. At 15th level, you have immunity to acid damage. Um, Again, uh, while some people may think, oh, well, that's too overpowered, it's not really. Um, monks get immunity to uh, poison damage at, like, level 8. Um, paladins, uh, I think paladins get it too as well, um, around there a little bit uh, after that. Uh, immunity to a single damage type is not that game-breaking, but it is very much uh, in line with the dragons themselves, where... You know, ancient red dragons, I believe, are immune to fire damage. Um, I'd have to uh, look it up again, but it, it just kind of makes sense that, you know, since that damage type is, is such, uh, is so infused in your very being, um, you, you would eventually kind of get an immunity 
to it. Um, so that's, uh, and it's a 15th level ability. So you've been doing this for, for a while. 17th level, uh, your draconic power is now st so infused into your being that it regenerates constantly. If you roll initiative and have zero draconic power points, you regain one draconic power point. Um, so once you get to like 17th, 18th, 19th, and 20th level abilities, they are massive, massive power leaps. These are the justifications for not multi-classing. Um, is the 17 to uh, 20 abilities um, because once you hit 17th level um, that means uh, generally if, if, if you're multi-classing for more than like one or two points like if you only multi-class one level uh, you still get all of the ability score improvements that you normally would because 19 is where you get your final ability score improvement in every class so if you only take one level of uh, a class uh, you only lose their ultimate ability. That's that's all you lose. Um, as soon as you take two, uh, you're losing an ability score improvement. So most people, if they take two, they'll generally go up to four so they can get that final ability score improvement and get another feat or just improve something to maximize their character. So everything from 17th level up uh, basically means you have foregone the ability to do that in another class. Um, and so you kind of get rewarded with it. So with this, uh, I, I basically took it from uh, monks, where if they, uh, I think it's 18th level for them that they get this, uh, or I can't remember where they get it. It, it might be their, their, their ultimate. Uh, but basically, uh, if you start combat, roll initiative, um, and you don't have any power points left, you can get one back. Um, again, uh, one draconic power point, uh, at this point, uh, I, I believe at 17th level, you have either five or six. It's, you know, you're, you're kind of limited in what you can do, but it's still going to make it so you can continue doing all the cool Dragon Knight stuff that you want. And it lets you use those points a lot more. Um, because again, that is a defining feature of the class, those draconic power points, the transformation, that's part of the meat of this class um so yeah that's the 17th level and then the 20th level ability um was was actually suggested by someone on the dm's guild page they go well, what happens um what happens when you die because if you know if you form this this bond with your dragon master and you get to level 20 and you don't kill them you know you have you know you've served this dragon uh, uh, eventually, you know, they're, they're going to care about you too. And so this idea that dragons live for thousands and thousands of years. Um, and so this idea of them creating, uh, you know, giving a portion of their power to a mortal race, uh, and then having to watch that race age out and die, uh, is, is really sad for the dragon master. Uh, so basically if you hit 20th level, um, you basically stop aging. Um, you can't die f from old age while your dragon master lives. Um, upon their death, you continue to age as you did before. Um, so basically, once you hit 20th level, you stop aging. Um, uh, simply because, uh, so you can, you know, basically serve your dragon master for the entirety of their life, not just your life and you know it was it was uh it, 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 again it was it was brought up by someone on the dms going i'm like you know what that makes a lot of sense um mechanically doesn't mean a whole lot um but from a lore perspective it's it, it's kind of cool uh, and then the other thing you get this is the only other dragon attack you get from the base class all your other dragon attacks because they're based on your weapon uh come from your draconic callings um, you get the dragon breath dragon attack. Um, as an action, you can spend four draconic power points at level 20, you have six. So that is the majority of your, uh, that's, that's more than half of your draconic power points to unleash a lesser version of their breath weapon. If you're not familiar, uh, I actually, uh, I did these calculations based on the ancient, dragon versions of these and I balanced all of them 
so that even though they use different uh, dice types, uh, they all do roughly about the same damage um, for the lines and roughly about the same damage for the cones. And the cones do less damage because they can hit more people. Um, but on that table at the beginning of the the uh, uh, thing, the dragon uh, 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 dragon type table, uh, the third column of it is breath weapon, and it will tell you uh, for the black dragon we're talking about. Uh, you have acid breath that you can do. It is a ninety foot line that is ten foot wide, and it does eight d eight damage. Um, I don't specifically list it in here, and I, I may have to. Um, uh, I may have to, to modify this. It was it was meant to be the same saving throw as an ancient dragon version of the breath weapon. Um, I forgot to write that in. Uh, most of them are going to be dex based. There are going to be a few that are constitution based, um, and I I think that's it. There's no psychic damage, so it's either going to be dexterity or constitution. And I I think the only ones that would be constitution would be thunder, uh, cold, and poison. Everything else would be a, a dexterity saving throw. But again, it's a ninety foot long line that's 10 feet wide you can get a lot of people in that or uh any of the co co cone, cone based ones are a 90 foot cone um they do a little bit less damage like um the equivalent uh, i don't have an acid one uh but the equivalent would be like a sapphire dragon's thunder cone would be 68 so instead of 8d8 damage you do 68 but it's a 90 foot cone so it's a cone that at its widest point is 90 feet wide and it's 90 feet long. Uh, so there's a lot of damage that you can do with that. So you do get a little bit lower damage threshold because you can hit more people. Um, so that's your, your, your penultimate ability for Dragon Knight is just basically you get to do a Dragon Breath attack. If you've ever fought a dragon, that is the scariest thing they have. Uh, and uh, the, it's specifically built so that it has to recharge. Uh, that's how powerful these attacks are. So that's why it costs four Draconic Power Points. There's nothing else in the class that costs more than one Draconic Power Point other than that extended transformation. Everything else is just one. Uh, but the Dragon Breath, because it is so powerful, I didn't want it to be something that the Dragon Knight could just spam. Um, and again, I wanted to give them choices. Do I want to spend four points that I could use on dragon attacks or transformations? Or do I want to, you know, use this dragon breath attack and just hit everything in existence for a lot of damage? Um, so, uh, yeah, all about choices and everything. And again, everything on this class is based on the idea that your weapon is a very important part of the character itself. The weapon that you wield is very important. That becomes much more apparent when we deal with the Draconic Callings because each one has a specific weapon that it uses. Uh, the second thing is your Draconic Power Points uh, and your Dragon Attacks. Uh, so everything here was kind of based around that idea of improving those some way. And the third thing is that Dragon Die, getting more powerful as you get higher up so your same regular attacks are doing more damage uh just from you leveling up uh the the nice thing about this class is it doesn't really need magic items to succeed um as uh every other class is is basically in in fifth edition is designed to not need magic items um uh all but i i think two classes have a built-in way to get past um, damage resistances uh, that higher level monsters have without a magic item um, and those two classes uh, have other ways to get around it just by being par part of a group so um, yeah just just like the classes in the PHB you don't you can you can play a completely uh, magic item free uh, game using this class if, if you wanted to. Or there are quite a few um, magic items that, that gel really, really well with Dragon Knights. 
Um, I generally tend, uh, for any DMs running a game with Dragon Knights, I generally tend to say, uh, basically avoid giving them magic weapons that have additional damage dice built into them, like Frostbrand or, or Flamebrand weapons, because they already have that super crit ability. Um, you don't really need to give them more. Um, but things like Weapons of Warning are always useful. Um, there's a thing called Mace of Terror or something like that, that if you change it into like a Spear of Terror or a um, uh, Shield of Terror or something like that, like you can do some, some pretty cool stuff that really fits well with the uh, Dragon. And then there's always, you know, uh, cloaks and things like that and... and, and, and and uh, item, ma magic items that aren't weapons that gel r really, really well with um, the Dragon Knight. So a lot of, of options to, to make this a very cool class. Um, so anyway, that's the, the, the overview of the Dragon Knight. Like I said, if you want to, um, I'll, I'll have a link in the description below um, so that you can download the class. Uh, it is pay what you want. So you can download it completely for free, uh, or if you'd like, you can actually give me, uh, you, can, you can choose to pay me for it. Uh, I get a 50-50 split with uh, the DMs Guild. Um, so what it, whatever you pay, I get, uh, I get half of it, and then uh, the DMs Guild and Wizards of the Coast have to split the other half. Um, so it's actually a, a, a relatively good deal for uh, me as far as, as profit split is concerned. Um, and uh, yeah, I've I've made a, a a not a great amount of money off of it. Obviously, not enough that I could. Let's put it this way: I've never been anywhere near close enough to even have to mention it on my taxes. That is how low an amount of money I made from this. Uh, but it is money, you know. It's it's done thing like I've, I've used it to, you know, I, I used some of it to buy a video card once. I saved up for a year or something to be able to get the video card, but um, so yeah, I, 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 I do appreciate it if, if, if you decide to actually pay for it. Um, you do not have to. It is uh, you can uh, download it a hundred percent for free, and I will not think any less of you. Um, and uh, yeah, I really like hearing uh, about people using uh, the class uh, in their games. I, I have a buddy of mine that that uses it in a homebrew game. Um, I had a Dragon Knight in a couple of the games that I've run, uh, but the person playing them is, has kind of, in, in both games, kind of left. Um, so as of right now, I'm not currently running a Dragon Knight in any of my camp campaigns, but, but I always give them the option because it's my class. Um, and everybody uh, that uh, has uh, played with it and has, has, had, uh, has had it uh, run in their games... Uh, has said that it's a really great class. It's it's a lot of fun. It's not overpowered at all, uh, and everybody has a ton of fun. Uh, on the DMs Guild itself, um, I'm going to find it real quick so I can tell you exactly. It's a uh, uh, it's a platinum bestseller, which is the um, the highest. Uh, it is that's the that's the highest bestseller you can have um and uh it's uh got a four and a half star rating uh average rating out of 25 reviews so um i've only uh there is there is literally only one less than five star review for it um and uh the 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 guy that reviewed it uh didn't read the class like i i actually called him out a little bit as like you none of this is right uh, and you're kind of arguing with, at that point, I think I had like two or 3,000 downloads. I'm like, 2,000 people don't agree with you. Um, so wherever you, you think this is... So that's the only bad review the class has gotten. Everything else has been stellar. People really, really love it. Um, so yeah, please, please check it out. Please, um, in the comments below, let me know what you think of the class. Uh, if, if you are playing the class... First of all, let me know how it's going in your campaign and if this helps shed some light on how the class is designed to be played. Um, again, the, the callings really define the class. So the, the, the next video I make uh, will be about the callings and I'll be able to go into a lot more of the nitty gritty of mechanics and act 
action uh, economy and, and 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 stuff like that. So, um, uh, um, yeah, uh, let let me know what you guys think. And um, like I said, if you have other classes or or stuff in the DMs Guild or or any of the the, the new stuff that's coming out now with um, uh, Eberron uh, being released and and stuff like that. Let let me know what you want me to cover. Um, I'm 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 certainly happy to do it. Um, I'm also thinking of renaming this uh, uh, this specific show uh, just because it's a mouthful. Um, so if you have ideas for really interesting you know names for this show, feel free to leave them in the comments below as well. Anyway, that that's 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 all for me today, and I, I will see you guys next time. All right. Bye-bye.